Hello and welcome to all of you out there in uh, Drinking on Mars land and happy Drinking on Mars Day, which is, you know, as we all know, is the day for Friday, as it has become over the past uh, many weeks. So I, I can't remember how, how long it's been, but I hope you've been enjoying the uh, the uh, Drinking on Mars, the best of Patrick Flynn, music from the 80s, 90s, zeros, teens and today. And here we are in, well, the, the zeros, I guess you, you'd call it. So we're up with the third decade of original music. And today, my guests are three-time returning guest, uh, Robin Flynn, founding member of The Modernist, and uh, also Nicholas Brown, Nick Brown, the uh, lead singer for The Modernists at the pinnacle of our career, the release of the uh, Big Score album in, I don't know, 2000. And Pre 2004, 2005, it occupied a big chunk of that uh, of our time there in the um, in the zeros. So, welcome, guys. Great to be here. Great to see you here. Okay. Um, before be, before I, I, I turn to you and you guys and just ask and, and we talk a little bit about Big Score, the song, which is the track for this week, um, last track on Big Score, the album, title track of the album, centerpiece of the album, and. and encapsulating so much of what we were trying to do about uh, with uh, with the band at that time and what it had become to represent truly the uh, you know a, a kind of a, a homegrown soundtrack of black to an imaginary black exploitation movie of our lives you'd say that's <laughs> in, in a way that's in my mind that's what we were doing and I think I'm listening back um it's out it does it does it, we, we gave it a good crack. I get it pretty close. It doesn't quite, perhaps, well, judge for yourself out there and uh, drinking on Mars land. It's the influences of it, in my mind, when I was writing it were things, tracks like Theme from the Mac by Willie Hutch. And we'll put a link to that downstairs. And, of course, which we've talked about before, Across 110th Streets um, by Bobby Womack. So I really think we, we kind of gave it a crack to to to, to give it the power and scale and emotion and drama and grandiosity of some of the, 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 those tracks. And I'll just uh, quickly read the credits here, which we'll put below as well, that, you know, I, I wrote it. It was actually in a very non, you know, black exploitation cinema way. It was about me uh, hanging on for the big score of my long service leave from work from a, a university. It was pretty, pretty ordinary. Kind of motivation, but that was that was what constituted a big score for me. Horns Arranged by Martin Kay, produced by Modernists and Physics at Hypnotech. Bass Robin Flynn, drums Eugene Dennison, guitar Patrick Flynn, keys Tim Pickering, percussion Matt Jello, backing vocals Kay Tuckerman and Victoria White. Um, Nick, you may know who Kay Tuckerman is. I'll, I'll come to you next. Uh, sax Martin Kay, baritone sax mm -hmm. Ian Pusey, trumpet Jeff Crawley. Lead vocals, Nick Brown. Now, Nick, can you tell us a little bit of what your recollections of that song are um, and the, the times back then? Well, that was, that was my favourite song, one of my favourites to sing live. Um, I, I loved it because it was it had multiple meanings, you know. F for me, it was... It was um, <laughs> had some naughty drug references, but also... Um, it was like a big musical score as well, and we had we had horns, and I think we had I'm not sure if we had flutes on it, but um, we had many many uh, instruments on that song, um, and it just had this big fat sound, and it was really really fun to sing. Um, I remember recording it in <laughs> in an apartment where there was a cat, so I was always allergic and um, sneezing and and had itchy eyes. Um, I remember early versions of that song from 2002 because we had, we 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 were sitting on that song for for quite a while. I remember the demo version and um, a, a remix that we were doing and playing at a house party and all of my friends dancing to it. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fond memories with with that whole era. But the big score era for me was more 2004, 2005, and there were two years before that where we were just gigging like mad and writing songs and churning out demos and just rehearsing a lot and then gigging around. So, yeah, the big score is more um, – I was with the band for four years and um, I remember the big score being more 2004, 2005, yeah. Yeah, well, the one thing that we've noticed is that throughout these Drinking on Mars podcasts is that me and many of the guests – 
often the answer to the question was, oh, I don't remember. So thank you for being a bit of clarity on the timeline there. I couldn't um, tell you what I did just yesterday, but I could tell you what I did 20 years ago. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, just uh, it's interesting to hear, hear talk about, you know, the, the drama and the theatricality and the, and, the, and the stage score because, of course, at that time, and now, well, you know, you're a, a trained showbiz professional, uh, 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 an actor slash singer slash model and dancer, maybe not, but, you, you know, you, <laughs> you'd come out of NIDA. <laughs> you'd come out of NIDA and, you know, you, you brought all the experience that you had in a performance and... Uh, and uh, in singing, singing and, and acting and, and, pr and producing and writing to, to, uh, to the band as well, which we were very big on, of course, create the yeah, whole, whole creativity. So Yeah, I remember being really excited about our sound because it was very filmic and very theatrical and it's the sort of music that makes you want to strut or makes you want to dance. And I was really excited about the theatricality of... Um, our stage and how we could uh, interact with each other um, and to, to, I was excited about experimenting with the performance of, of our set and um, yeah I remember we we had some pretty big shows you know we, 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 did, Absolutely. we did the Metro and we did uh, the Vanguard and of course the basement was a was a huge milestone. A few times. We did the basement a few times um, so we had a really really large show and it was quite a theatrical show and um gosh some some amazing memories for me just to experiment with with performance and and with my voice you know lending my voice to a, a different sound because i before that i'd done mostly um kind of pop musical theater i suppose and um it was really lovely to to lend my voice to to a more r and b um soulful sound and um i was trying to figure out where where my voice lent itself and um yeah uh it was really really a a, an important developmental time for me as a as an artist and as a writer because i first started writing songs with you guys and then later kind of moved into writing more screenplays and and um theater but uh it was a really really creative time for me and um an important time Mm. As as a performer and as a as an artist and, and and a writer as well, and and of course I meant to mention this at the beginning, and we'll talk more towards the end. But you're still writing and you're still putting out music, of course, with your latest single up and coming has uh, uh, just just been released a couple of months ago. Sounds fantastic, everybody out there in uh, drinking on Mars land. <laughs> um, and I'll put a link to that below. But Robin, maybe you could just pick up on a little bit of that. What Nick said about about because you you and he obviously worked together so much on the vocals, and you were mm -hmm. you were writing similarly uh, developing your songwriting and, and production mm -hmm. skills and yeah. arrangements, and 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 we had a love of Earth, Wind, and Fire at that stage. Yes. So maybe you yes. can tell us a little bit more <laughs> about yes, yes. what was happening. Yes, well, look, it, it's uh, it's good hearing your reflections, Nick because I think I'm the opposite. I can remember what I did yesterday, but it's a bit of a blowback. <laughs> but, no, I do remember a fair bit. And, and that, that was uh, an intense four years there from, from when you joined up and, you know, up until about 2005. And, um, and, 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 and yes, the, the, the music, it, it was, we had so many instruments. It was an extravaganza and um, we, we, we always wanted to make it epic. And um, and and it, you know, look on on reflection, it, it was it was so much fun, and it was was such a creative outlet, and it was so collaborative as well, um, uh, because we we were all, I think, you know, we we had a broad direction that we wanted to go, and we had those seventies funk and disco influences and so on, and then we, I think, we all just just pushed at it, and um, and and look, we we were all writing songs too. Um, certainly um, we were writing songs together, Nick. You were writing songs together. It was sort of like, you know, the, the big score album picked up the output as it was then. I can just imagine if you'd remained in the band for, for a little longer, we probably prob might, might have recorded another uh, with, a, with a range of, of, uh, of, of further songs from all of us. But anyway... Um, 
Look, it, it was, yeah, again, it was an epic time, as you said, amazing, amazing gigs, big gigs, um, a, a fabulous outlet. I think our, our record for band members on stage was 15. Would that be about right? I seem to remember we uh, might have had a five-piece horn section and, you know, a couple of backing vocalists on stage. I, I seem to recall a pub in Glebe somewhere. Um, but, uh, and look, just a, a reflection. Back up as well. Pardon? Yeah, backup dancers a few times as well. Yes, <laughs> yes we did. We did indeed. We did indeed. Um Look, and a, and a reflection on, on the sort of genre. Um, yes, we were inspired, Pat, by black exploitation films and the music and, uh, and 70s funk and disco. And um, I, I don't know, I, I think that thinking back at the, the Big Score album, I think it reasonably uh, lands reasonably well in the pocket of acid jazz, I think, um, which is a pretty broad term. But um, it's... Uh, I think it's a complex album with, you know, different styles in it as well. Um, but, yeah, f fun times. And we did, we did, but, yes, we did work very hard and uh, yeah. lots of lugging gear and, uh, you know, getting up and to go to our, our other jobs the day after. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, just, just, just picking up on something you said and, and looking at the, you know, the, the, the the progression of the band, you know, as obviously I've been doing and putting a project together. I think with Big Score and and, and with Nick Nick's uh, input, a couple of things. The, the music definitely definitely became funkier, but I think at the same same time became smoother as well. And that's you know that uh, which is which is which is a good thing, and that's where it fits in the pocket with acid jazz. And I think Nick, your Pop sensibilities kind of combined with Robin's and my pop sensibilities as well to to, to bring, bring bring more of that out. Um, and I, I naturally have do... a, I naturally have a breathy kind of voice, and to, to do the big shouty funk stuff was was fun. But naturally, my voice is quite breathy, and and I, we leaned into that as well with a few of mm. the more romantic yeah. songs. Yeah, do yeah. That, yeah, that that's right, and that's why. Um, that's why I'd like to hear what you what some of your favourite songs to sing on the album were, or that we, you did with the band were, the original ones, and then I might come back to a couple of the covers as well. But what what about the, any of the other songs on the album that you particularly liked that you might might be worth I loved singing before, either, either of I loved singing Republic of Funk because it was so <laughs> high and back. I mean, yeah. I can't sing high anymore, but back then I had a, a ridiculous kind of. I think Robin used to call it the mouse, this kind of squeal. <laughs> um, um, singing like a girl, we used to call it. Um, and I, yeah. I love singing Gold. Gold was a really fun song to sing. We, yeah. Um, yeah, how about you, Robin? Oh, look. Oh, gosh, it's, um, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, look, just, just thinking about um, Big Score Part 2 from the album, um, Look, look, I, I, I like a lot of them equally, but they're, you know, they're, they're quite different. And uh, I like Big, Big Score Part 2 because it's really got some space in it in terms of, you know, funk music. It, it's, it's really got some excellent gaps. And um, I'm just reflecting on, on, on your voice as well, Nick, and, and, and that breathiness. Um, I think that song actually showcases that, that, the, the, the whole range from that breathiness up to the the wild, soulful, high outtakes. Um, so yeah, big score is um, is up there. Um, look, I think I like I like not a love song as well on the you know really really smooth side and um, mile high. I love yeah. mile high too. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I wrote down, you know, by the time I get to my list, it's nearly the the whole album. But you know, step one up for a good time. You know, it's kind of a a, a classic. Mile Mile High is, you know, I, I almost wanted to put Mile High on this uh, on this project as a, as a midweek release, but uh, not a love song. Yes, fantastic song, great recording, um, and all, all there is to it as well. Um, I think it's another another really good song. Maybe we didn't quite hit it in, in that that recorded version, but sometimes when we play it live, when it was really, live, really hit the, the live versions were were 
really, really funky. I remember Step On Up for a Good Time in the early mm. uh, years that I was with the band was always a, a crowd favourite and my friends loved Step On Up for a Good Time as well. I don't think we yeah. quite captured that live sound in the recording um, for, as you said, for um, All There Is To It and for um, Step On Up. Um, but it's, that's that's the the difficulty in recording such a big band, you know. For, mm. for a recording, yeah. It's hard to get to well, well, the, the demo version for Step On Up, which uh, I yeah, haven't heard in years, but I, I, always, uh, I love that. So if either of you have got a, still got a copy of it, I'd love it for my archives. I do not. Which would be great. I've got it. I've got ah, it. Awesome. Great. Well, I found we'll, all these we'll boxes talk, we'll of talk. CDs. Yeah. And um, I, I've still got a CD player in my car and, and the boxes are in my garage. And every few days is, mm. I kind of reach into a box and pull out a, a random CD without a label and put it in. And I'm like, oh, another modernist yeah, demo. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, <laughs> when you're in Sydney, I'll have to come around and uh, rip, rip them. Um, we'll, I'll put a link to uh, the whole Big Score album on uh, Spotify down below so our listeners can listen to it. But uh, just talking about the way some of the songs live, you know, did, uh, did, did pop, you know, really well. And we used to gig very hard back in those days and we had, you know, we had a bit of a following, of course, you know, many of them were our friends, but we had, uh, you know, we were regular and independent radio and stuff and we played uh, played across the city. Are there any, uh, uh, and of course, as well as just gigging with the modernists, which, you know, we were Friday night band, which I used to really love because, you know, being an originals band, although we played some covers because if you're playing live eight piece, <laughs> then, then the mar- the market pushes on a Friday night. The market pushes you towards playing some covers, which we love to do. But to, to kind of make money, remember we formed an alter ego cover band called Soul Power that we used to go and play three set. We used to cobble together three set shows and play all around the place. So are there any any of those gigs? <laughs> At the beef beer and bourbon, it was called back then, and we did the, the bourbon, midnight. the bourbon and beefsteak, bourbon, the bourbon and beefsteak. We did like a midnight shift till six a.m. I think we had four sets. I've never been more hoarse in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Fisherman's friends, uh, good times. I, 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 I'm glad you remember that one because that's definitely one that I'm actually uh, really kind of uh, not proud of, but really happy that we we got to do it because the bourbon and beef steak was a like an institution in Sydney, mm. and uh, and and now d- uh, doing a, a set like that is kind of classic, and um, and it's not there anymore. It's, it's being anymore. turned into apartments as 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 we speak. And yeah, you're right; it, it doesn't happen. But there, there's one gig that I do remember a Soul Power gig at. Um, uh, a soul power gig out at the Bull and Bush Hotel in Borkham Hills, where we played to virtually no people. And uh, I remember butchering personally, uh, reminiscing by Little River Band, which is a song with a lot of chords in it. <laughs> I will say, and and Cat, who is a backing vocalist, Cat Altamonte, Cat Sandbach, uh, um, had a handbag stolen. <laughs> And that was there, Eric. We had to, was Aaron. it Aaron? Oh, okay. It was must have been Aaron. They did. Yeah, okay. Aaron. <laughs> and then, and then Nick, we had we had to drive you to Mudgy to do 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 some work or some other gig that you were doing on on the Saturday. So we, as soon as we finished the show, we we drove we drove you out to Mudgy and then whipped all the gear oh, thanks, and then drove guys. back to. <laughs> uh, hey, when, when when you're out in the Hills District, it's not very far to get to Mudgy <laughs> for us us, us in the city dwellers. <laughs> but 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 the, but a lot of, you know in that in that period we were a pretty hard working uh, you know funk and hard funk and band um, and that's something Nick that I thought that you know you with your you know your a, a, as a professional entertainer and, a, and a, a, that's your career that you really brought to, and brought that to to kind of views what Robin and I and the rest of the band were trying to do as uh, you know enthusiastic artists. And, and amateurs, and we really, uh, <laughs> we were really funk and hard uh, there. And and on that, some of those lives. Sorry, go, go ahead. <laughs> we were ambitious. Well, well, we, we were ambitious. We were young. You know, the fire was still there. Um, and what I, we do have as a um, as a as a recorded piece of that is we did 
I don't know if you guys remember the live at Zen Studios, which was a rehearsal studio down at Speeders, where we went in with almost the quintessential lineup. The full band, we did have a three piece horn section that night, which was in one room. We had the, the rhythm section, the band in the main room, and then Nick, you and Kat were in the, um, in the control room singing, doing the vocals with the engineer. And it was just I like a four hour live set or something, or six hours. We just had booked from maybe six or midnight. We recorded 14 songs and they sound fantastic. So we'll, 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 we'll get that out there to the listening yeah. public at, at uh, some stage. Um, right, moving on. I think uh, probably just wrap it up there. Um, but before we go, just as do any, uh, do, do you want to tell us anything that you're working on at the moment or, or where you're at? Um, oh gosh, well, I was always because there's, 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 pl there's, there's plenty going on. So I, know, I know that <laughs> a lot of TV stuff, a lot of writing stuff as yep. well, but music stuff I still do on the side for a bit of fun. Um, and yeah, just doing some just collaborating with different friends and DJs and um, just releasing. I've got a lot of old songs that I recorded with another funk band and I've still got yep. all of the, um, I've still got uh, all of those vocals and, and stems and um, just kind yep. of remixing and putting them out there. For Fantastic. Fun. Yep. Yeah, musically. Yep. Yep. Well, I, I can tell you that I am with Cheese and Crackers. We've been, Andrew and I have recorded, uh, I think I, I think I might have, you know, talked to you about it very briefly, but Music Brings People Together, which is an old song that uh, you and I wrote together. I did the music, you wrote the lyrics and, uh, and uh, that we demoed, which is, and it's a fantastic song. So uh, we, we, I might hit you up again. And if your schedule permits, you can, you can put a vocal over it, a second vocal over it. I'll send you the demo, actually. And you can have a listen. Sure. Got a really, yeah, got a really good one. Yeah, yeah, we, we, did, we did do a kind of a demo version, but this is a much, much better one. That we've got now, and it's kind of in the in the in the in the cheese and crackers backlog. I, I've got it, so um, so that's uh, definitely coming up. And I'll, I'll get Robin to play the bass line on that one. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Robin's need. bass lines. It was so cool <laughs> seeing that that footage of um, you all playing Macho Swine. Um, <laughs> it was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah, I remember so many of our gigs at the, at the Rose of Australia and. Mm -hmm. um, so Ivy Ivy was always fun to play as well, actually. Mm. It's a pity that one didn't make it onto the album. Mm. Do you remember at the do you remember the basement that time when suddenly um, a whole bunch of women's undies were thrown at us, and we had undies hanging off our heads and off our guitars, and we're like, oh my gosh, chicks <laughs> dig us, people love us, and then later. <laughs> We realised that my mum had shown up to the basement with a with a garbage bag full of her. <laughs> and they, they planted them with the audience and made the girls throw it at us, and we didn't know that until much later. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous. Do you remember that? Oh. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to. to. I'm trying to. <laughs> Maybe we were in on it, but I think I, I think it's a. <laughs> Go on, Robin. Look, I, I I seem to remember a pair of them hanging off the the end of the the bass guitar and the big tuning pegs. <laughs> I just remember looking at them with these granny undies hanging off his guitar. And was like, oh my god, amazing! <laughs> well, you know, that, that's in keeping of the uh, you know the the, the the overarching strategy of the band, I think. Which was uh, uh, well, you know, if you play the music that'll get the girls, then the boys will follow, and that's that, that's how you draw an audience. And I think that I think we did that pretty successfully. But I think so that that little to... anecdote is, <laughs> yeah, I, we could just get, get we show up. And they used to get, we used to have. I mean, you can see it in that video footage um, from the album release. There are a lot of people up dancing the whole way through the set, and yeah. we used to book yeah. out those venues as well. And this is before. Uh, before Facebook and before yeah. social media. So we, we must have just texted our, our friends and then yeah. people. I think randoms would come as well. There were a lot of people showing up. It was yeah, pretty yeah. cool to pack out those venues, you know. Yeah. Really yes, well, that, look, that, that, look that, that was all part of the, the hard work as well, you know, marshalling everyone to come along and, um, and deploying marketing strategies, you know, wherever we could and... Uh, and uh, you know, having the advertising budgets for on the street at the drum media, and um, but yeah, we we really packed out uh, 
basement a few times and certainly the vanguard and the rose of Australia in Eskenville too. Didn't we have a gig at the Metro as well? I remember a gig at the yep. Metro. So, yeah, yeah, Sydney, the first first annual Sydney Funk and Soul Festival. Uh, that was I've still got the poster for that. That was uh, that was a good one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, the, it was the like, artwork. The artwork and uh, the design uh, was was fantastic and enjoyable part of the band as well. And there were a range of other collaborators there too. Yes, yes. Well, I, the, 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 I, the Peter Savile, the Peter Savils of the of the of, the, of life. Um, look, uh, on, on that note, and I think I think the note that I want to finish on is maybe on the on the uh, on the girls' undies being being uh, put, 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 thrown up on stage because that kind of encapsulates many things about uh, yeah, about the band and what we're trying to achieve. You know, the, the sexiness, the 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 theatricality, the uh, the the fact that it was all uh, all a bit uh, you know manufactured in a way, which you know all, all, all good art is to kind of create create a sense. Um, but also, it's you know it's, it was just about us and. Uh, I don't know. As I, I, I say so often, and I've said it on this on this podcast before, that when it comes to art and music, being you know uh, art, you, when you love something enough, then you, in, in, when you love art and or something enough, you want to go out and do it and, and create it yourself. And I think that's uh, what what um, it came to with the modernists and the particular style and what we're looking to get. And we created something you know quite quite unique. And enduring as well. And I'd again urge everybody to uh, go out and have a listen to the whole album on Spotify and you'll uh, hear what we've been talking about. So any last words or observations before we go? Robin, I'll go to, go to you first. <laughs> Look, I, I think we've covered the territory. Um, it was it was, it was was great fun, great time. And, uh, look, we, we should do it again sometime. Yes, okay. Reunion. Nick, <laughs> last Modern word or observation? Reunion. <laughs> Modernist reunion, that's right. As long as we play Maybe. shag piles up. <laughs> well, actually, well, I, well, actually uh, I, I was, I'm glad you mentioned them because I've written them both down when we're talking about favourite songs or songs in the, in the backlog that need to be written. I, I've written down Shag by Love and Blow My Bubble, which we performed at the launch to the big score. So, right. But yeah. they're, they're both worth they're both worth dusting off because they're, they're really good and they're just about matured by that stage. So I will just leave us, all you all of you out there, thank you again, Nick. Thanks, Robin. Um, it's been a great episode, great times, great to catch up. We'll do it again. And to everybody out there in Drinking on Mars land, I'll just leave you with this. Do you want more? Of course you do, because we're all just hanging on and talking about the big school. Thank you and goodbye.